Hello and welcome back, ghouls and goblins. I hope you're having a magical day. Thank you for taking the time to support the channel. My name is Hello Good Game. Happy to be your host within this Magic the Gathering video in which we will be showcasing the latest spoilers for Murders at Karlov Manor. This is a new expansion for Magic the Gathering, specifically for a lot of us into Arena. Playable on the 6th, we do have some other dates to showcase and highlight for all of you who are looking to partake in the pre-release events, uh, so on and so forth, uh, as well as some new mechanics to look at within the freshly spoiled cards. So I'm very excited for today's video. Uh, we'll be exposing my illiteracy one sentence at a time. <laughs> so make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel to help support. And let's take a look at these new cards. It's a new lap record. All righty, Doogie. So first and foremost, this is the first time I'm viewing these cards. It's going to be a painful process, um, you know, on my comprehension, on my pronunciation. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's that's part of that process, right? Um, you know, uh, identifying the value within these cards, which cards are good and worth our wild cards and um, attention and, you know, which ones aren't and are just, you know, a total waste of our time. So let's take a look at the first card, Judith Carnage Connoisseur for five mana. This is a three, four legendary creature, human shaman. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, choose one. That spell gains death touch and lifelink. That's very powerful on the death touch clause with damage based spells specifically if they hit more than one target. Or we can create a 2-2 red imp creature token with when this creature dies, it deals two damage to each opponent. Uh, that's fairly crazy too, and I'm certain can turn on uh, a few combo decks potentially. Um, just creating multiple 2-2s two to sacrifice that deal two damage to your opponent. Like that's pretty wild. Um, each opponent as well, which will make it a great... Uh, commander if you're playing commander or brawl um, which is really really cool to see it's a little expensive i think potentially for limited at five but it's a crazy world out there so you never know i love to see these cool abilities on cards uh, which i do think we'll see more and more as they've reduced the number of planeswalkers in each set down to one speaking of kaya spirits justice four mana three starting loyalty a static ability whenever one or more creatures you control and or creature cards in your graveyard are put into exile. You may choose a creature card from among them until the end of turn. Target token you control becomes a copy of it, except it has flying. So this is very interesting. Um, more so when we consider Kaya's abilities, plus two, surveil two, and then exile a card from your graveyard. So uh, if we have a token in play and a creature card in graveyard, uh, specifically ours, we can now turn on her static ability by just taking care of it with exile and then converting our token into a copy of it. And now it gains flying. Crazy cool, right? Uh, while simultaneously being able to control our opponent's graveyard of any potential threats. Surveilling two is a great way also to push through our deck for consistency and get that creature in there for later, you know? Um, cool. Plus one, create a 1-1 one, one black and uh, white spirit creature token with flying. Um, you know, worst case scenario, that could be your token that you utilize. And a minus two, exile target creature you control. And for each other player, exile to one target creature that that player controls. So again, that will activate Kaya's static ability for ourselves, which is really, really nice if we have a token in play. And then, you know, the control uh, that that offers to multiple opponents, again, is very, very nice. Moving on, Kellen, Inquisitive Prodigy for four. This is a three, four with flying and vigilance. When uh, it attacks, destroy up to one target artifact. If you control uh, this permanent, draw a card. Not bad, pretty cool. Um, three, four flying vigilance that can remove your opponent's artifacts and allow you also to potentially draw cards turn after turn if you remove your own artifacts. Tail the suspect for two at sorcery as an adventure, which is pretty cool that we're seeing more adventure every set. Investigating, giving you that clue token that you can sacrifice later for the draw. Nice. Uh, as well as allowing you to play an additional land this turn. 
Uh oh, that might be problematic. <laughs> Without spending too much time on that, O'Reilly is a Vindicator, four mana, four two with flying lifelink, ward two, disguise for four plus X. And when the Vindicator is turned face up, you've activated my trap card. More on this in a second. We'll explain the mechanic for you. Exile up to X other target creatures from the battlefield and or creatures from graveyards. When it leaves the battlefield, return the exiled cards to their owner's hand, right? So this is quite nice as you can grab your creatures from uh, your grave that will now come back to your hand. You can grab uh, the creatures that your opponent has in the battlefield um, and, you know, they're going to gain those uh, back to their hand as well. So disguise four plus X is a little expensive, um, not stated here, but if we jump over to the mechanic quickly, um, disguise is an ability that will allow you to play the card uh, face down for three mana. It will be a 2-2 colorless with War 2, um, which is pretty cool. And then again, at instant speed, you can activate the oh, trap card or flip the creature from Disguise um, back to its uh, you know face upside. Potentially, there's ability in the Vindicator's case. We do see that, which is quite interesting. Um, very cool, right? So pay three mana. Play it face down. It's a 2-2 two, two colorless war 2. And then you'll pay its disguise cost 4 plus X to flip it, which is great just in itself as um, you know a potential surprise block. Um, and then the extra ability that you can really gain a lot of value from as well, which is pretty cool. Not to mention it's an angel, which we already have a relatively competitive angel deck. So it's good to see. Non-legendary, you can stack your deck full of it. And it should be, uh, should be a lot of fun. So moving on. Uh, <laughs> uh, Etrata, Deadly Fugitive. Three mana, a 1-4 legendary creature, Vampire Assassin. This is a mythic, as the Vindicator was. Uh, a 1-4 with Death Touch. Face down creatures you control have four mana. Turn this creature face up. If you can't, exile it. And then you may cast the exiled card without paying its mana cost. Whoa, what? Face down creatures you control have pay four. Turn this creature face up. If you can't, exile it. And then you may cast the exiled card without paying its mana cost. What am I missing? Whenever an, ex, uh, an assassin you control deals combat damage to an opponent, cloak the top card of that player's library. Interesting. So we can jump over to our cloak mechanic. Cloak is a keyword action introduced into the manor as an upgraded version of manifest. When you cloak a card, put it into the battlefield face down. While face down, a cloaked card is a 2-2 colorless creature with no name, no creature type, and has war 2. A cloaked creature may be turned face up for its mana cost if the creature had morph or disguise. The morph, uh, mega morph or disguise cost uh, can be paid instead. A cloaked non-creature card can't be turned face up this way. So I think that is the key uh, part here. A non-creature card can't be turned face up. So if it's non-creature, uh, obviously you're not turning it face up and then allowing you to cast it from exile for free. So that is uh, pretty, pretty, pretty good, <laughs> right? Um, Casting anything, I guess, for four. Not bad. And then, of course, uh, as four mentioned, but reparsing, whenever an assassin you control deals combat damage to an opponent, cloak the top card of that player's library. But how are you... So when they draw it and play it, they have the ability to play it face down as that because it is the top card of their library. It allows you to put it into the battlefield face down. Yeah, okay, cool. That's a, that's a thing. This is all taking a, a little bit to get used to, but um, I believe once the spoilers continue to come out and we spend some more time with the set, uh, we'll have a clear picture of exactly how everything fits together. Pretty decent, though. You know, three mana, one four, death touch. I like it. Uh, a vampire as well, which is nice. 
Scene of the crime, uh, new land, artifact land as well, which is pretty cool, um, a clue. When it enters the battlefield, it will do so tapped. It adds generic mana by tapping. You can also tap it to tap an untapped creature you control to add mana of any color. That's not terrible. And we can pay two to sacrifice it, drawing a single card. Hmm. Okay. Argus costs Spirit of Justice, four mana, a 2-4 legendary creature spirit detective that is mythic as well. Wow. Double Strike, Vigilance. Whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, choose uh, up to one target creature. If it's suspected, exile it. Otherwise, suspect it. So if we jump now over to suspect, uh, keyword action that uh, is designed... Sorry, it, uh, it creates a designation on a creature that encourages attacking, um, which I believe gives it menace. Cards may suspect a creature, after which it is suspected. It gains menace and loses the ability to block. Much like Goat, it incentivizes um, the individual to attack, given its new evasion-based ability, uh, which is great. Um, the attack will only... like uh, Even though it has double strike, it's still only one attack, right? Um, but it is also an ETB, which is pretty cool. So a little expensive, but, um, you know, if it, uh, can get multiple things exiled, I don't think that's bad at all. Uh, if you have other creature, cause it has double strike and vigilance. So it's going to be defending with first strike. If you have a Thalia in play, then you've got two first strike creatures or brutal Cathar flipped, right? Um, the keyword is forcing it to attack right? And, um, you know, then the first strike can just uh, grab it. And if not, you attack again and exile it. So easy peasy lemon squeezy. I think that's pretty decent. Uh, little, maybe a little expensive, but you know, it's got double strike and what do you expect? Massacre girl, known killer. Oh, she is four mana, four, four legendary creature, human assassin with menace. Creatures you control have wither. The, the, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> they deal damage to a creature in the form of minus one, minus one counters. This is very, very good. Lord have mercy. Whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, if its toughness was less than one, draw a card. Uh, we could, off the top of my head, pair this with proliferate, right? Um, all their creatures have minus one, minus one. Let's move it up. And this is a great way to just clean up the field. Uh, while providing additional value to ourselves in some form. I don't mind it. I like it. Again, you know, it's a little expensive, but that's what you get. Tulsimir, Midnight's Light. This is even more expensive. For five mana, a 3-2 legendary creature, Elf Scout, a rare with lifelink. And when it enters the battlefield, create Voja, Fenstalker, a legendary 5-5 five, five green and white wolf creature token. With Trample, whenever a wolf you control attacks, if Tolzmere attacked this combat, target creature and opponent controls, blocks that wolf this combat if able. Uh, and I guess if there's one blocker, it's not blocking uh, Tolzmere, which is nice. It's blocking the 5-5 five, five with Trample instead. Uh, and then maybe you give it Indestructible. I don't know. Pretty decent, but so expensive. However, um... I don't mind it. The lifelink is pretty cool. The 5-5, five, five, in addition to the 3-2, is pretty cool. Um, and then the potential evasion, if there's a lack of blockers, is also pretty cool. Right? Um, basically forcing removal. Right? Like, you know, let's say they have a Brutal Cathar and a couple of your creatures, and, you know, Tulsimir hits the play and it's going to attack uh you, and you get to choose that creature that's now forced to block so that can be quite um advantageous right so pretty decent i like it trostani three whisperers for three mana this does have a hybrid selesnia mana in it uh which is pretty interesting a legendary creature dryad that is a mythic a four four for three that's a big deal 
Pay two, target creature gains death touch until the end of turn. Pay one, hybrid Selesnia. Uh, target creature gains vigilance until the end of turn. Pay three, target creature gains double strike until the end of turn. <laughs> Whoa! All right, all right, all right. That's wild! <laughs> well, it's a good thing it's legendary. So you see the difference? Like, even though this is a good card, it's so expensive in comparison to something like this, which is phenomenal. Like, this is going to be a multi-format card, no? Wowza! I can't believe it. Kylox, Visionary Inventor. Seven big ones as a legendary creature. Uh, Vishano Artificer, 4-4, four, four, Menace, War 2, Haste. When it attacks, sacrifice any number of other creatures, then exile the top X cards of your library where X is their total power. You may cast any number of instant or sorcery spells from among the exiled cards without paying their mana cost. <laughs> it does have haste. Seven mana is pretty extensive, but it does have haste. The War 2 is pretty decent as well. And the Menace, in conjunction with its ability, is going to give you a pretty good chance to attack a second time uh, with the Ward as general protection. Uh, not to mention the card art is lit. Dang, dude. Liking it. The mana cost is a little bit aggressive, I'll admit, but I'll allow it. Case of the Ransacked Lab for three mana as a case, which is a new form of enchantment similar to, I guess, a Saga spell. Instant and sorcery spells you cast will cost one less to cast, which is great. And then to solve this case, so it's not progressing turn by turn, it stays in play, which is really cool here is it's a spell reduction uh, or cost reduction spell. Um, we'll solve it, right? So um, if you've cast four or more instant or sorcery spells this turn, this is solved. And then once it's solved, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, draw a card, right? Um, so three mana, this is in play until your opponent removes it or you solve it, at which point you get the, um, the, the benefit of it being solved, okay? Very cool here. Uh, you know, we don't mind that at all. Krenko, Baron of Tin Street, 3 mana, 3-3 three, three with haste. Tap it, sacrifice an artifact, put a plus one, plus one counter on each goblin you control. Whenever an artifact is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, you may pay one red mana. If you do, create a 1-1 one, one red goblin creature token with uh, haste until the end of turn. <laughs> I'll allow it. More mono red toys. And, you know, it's not just a mono red toy, though, but it's a specific build for mono red which is pretty cool right it's, it's like uh mere folk are the best blue cards everybody knows this moving on well spirits that's actually uh, maybe let's not start that argument <laughs> war leaders car car maybe call for three <laughs> as an enchantment creatures you control get plus one plus one that's not bad and whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control it will deal one damage to each opponent that's not terrible at all specifically with decks that can flood the field with creatures Todenan's song is a good example of this um those creatures will know also have haste you're going to get a bunch of two two haste rats while dealing uh damage equal to the number of them that entered the battlefield Pretty decent. Uh, you know, there's lots of other ways that we can play this card as well, which is pretty neat. Not bad. Uh, Izoni, Center of the Web for six mana. This is a 5-4 legendary creature, Elf Detective with Menace. And uh, when it enters the battlefield or attacks, you may collect evidence for, uh, if you do, create two, two one black and green spider creature tokens with Menace and Reach. I like it, but so expensive at six. Sacrifice four tokens, surveil two, then draw two cards, and you gain two life. That's not bad. Four tokens is pretty heavy, but dang, dude. So if we want to jump over to the new collect evidence uh, keyword, we have no information here. But what we'll be doing is we will be exiling card.
cards from our grave with mana value equal to the required cost, in this case, evidence four, right? So we're exiling four one mana cards. We're exiling a single four mana card, anywhere in between, right? So, so, so on and so forth, but mana value equal to uh, for the specified uh, clause that will be unique to each card, right? So in this case, it's the creation of the two tokens, which is pretty decent. Again, you know, it's just so expensive. It's an elf, which is nice though. I like that. Uh, Tessa, opulent oligarch for three mana, a two, three human advisor. Again, and the legend, it's so much legendary today uh, with death touch. And at the beginning of your end step, investigate for each opponent who lost life this turn. Whenever a clue you control is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, create a one, one white and black spirit creature token. Uh, with, I assume, flying, and this ability triggers only once each turn. Spirits love to fly, baby. Three mana, two, three. Death touch. Investigate almost every turn, probably. And sacrifice clues to make one ones. I don't. I honestly don't mind it. It's pretty good. Branch of Vidu Ghazi. A land that taps for generic. You can disguise three. Um, I guess having it be a creature for a little bit, which is decent. And when it's turned face up at two mana of any one color uh, until the end of turn, you don't lose this mana as steps and phases end. Is that low key a good card? A land that can be a two, two that when flips generates two mana of any color. Huh? I'm going to keep an eye on you. Axbane Ferrix, four mana, four, four, creature, beast. This is our first non-legendary card. <laughs> Ward, collect evidence, four. Whenever this creature becomes a target of a spell or an ability, an opponent controls, counter it, unless that player exiles cards with total mana value four or greater from their graveyard, right? So uh, cards, plural, so you can add it up to four. Um, Graveyard control, which is really cool. Uh, I like this in conjunction with grave control, right? Exile their grave, and now they can't pay the ward. Yeah, all right, all right, all right. That is phenomenal. Very good. So, you know, if they can't pay the collect evidence for, they're going to have a bad time. It's got haste as well. Death touch is pretty cool. Um, I don't mind it. No trample, but I, th I think the ward is good enough. Case of the uh, Filched Falcon. When the case enters the battlefield, create a clue. Right? We can pay two, sacrifice it, draw a card. To solve, control three or more artifacts. And once solved, pay three, sacrifice the case. Put four plus one plus one counters on target non-creature artifact. It becomes a zero zero bird with flying in addition to its other types. And, you know, I guess it would be a four four. So that's uh, not terrible. I mean, you get the clue for one. You just have to have enough artifacts, at which point you're still paying to put counters on one of them. I mean, it's there. Maybe this is good in a way I don't say, but it just seems like a classic uncommon card. Good value, you know. Maybe fun to play with in your limited cases. Uh, sorry, matches. <laughs> Deadly Complication. Three mana. Sorcery, choose one or both. Destroy target creature. Put a plus one, plus one counter on target suspected creature you control. You may have it become no longer suspected. That seems pretty niche, does it not? Again, you know, uh, three mana, destroy creature, uncommon. It's going to be played all the time in limited, right? I wouldn't. This is so unique, though, and niche that playing it outside of limited it might be a little bit weird maybe the top deck is a uh a suspect mechanic build and uh, this is the key card in your sideboard i don't know seems a little weird I, it's really easy to misinterpret cards uh when we're first looking at them as well auspicious arrival two mana instant speed target creature gets plus two plus two until the end of turn investigate again creating that token um, you know, just plus two, plus two doesn't really seem like much. Night Drinker, Mori, four mana, four, two, flying. When it enters the battlefield, you lose three life. Disguise two. 
Hmm. Not terrible. Again, not really great, though. Some of the disguise could be cool, though. I think that mechanic it might be extremely powerful. Gadget Technician for 4 is 3-2 Goblin Artificer. When it enters the battlefield or is turned face up, creating 1-1 one, one colorless stop their artifact creature token with flying disguise for 2. Expose the culprit for 2. Instant speed, choose 1 or both. Turn target face down creature face up. Interesting. Exile any number of face up creatures you control with disguise in a face down pile. Shuffle that pile and cloak them. Hmm. Where do they go from the pile? <laughs> um, shuffle up. I'm pretty curious on how that works. Interesting. More on that soon. Uh, mysterious creature. So this will be what we see when we have a cloaked or disguised creature. The 2-2 two -two with ward 2. Somalia Sentry, 2 mana, 1, 3, Reach, Elf Archer, whenever a face down permanent you control is turned face up, put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on it, and a plus 1, plus 1 counter on the Sentry. Oh man, that's kind of sad, but it will be good in limited, I believe. Galvanize for 2, instant speed, 3 damage to target creature, if you've drawn 2 or more cards this turn, 5 damage instead. <sighs> that's not terrible. That's pretty good. Two mana instant speed. Nice removal there. Crime Novelist for three. Goblin Bard, one, three. Whenever you sacrifice an artifact, a plus one, plus one counter on the Novelist and add one red mana. Okay. Yup. So that is going to be playable in a combo deck most certainly. Blood token sacrifice for one. Add the mana to sacrifice the next. Have triggers when artifacts leave the battlefield? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. There's, of course, you can stack this and that now have multiple mana generating each turn. This is interesting. Hmm. And obviously, not a generally competitive card outside of specific weird janky build, but nonetheless, it is interesting. And, you know, it's kind of well of magic for those things, too, right? Public uh, throw fair. When it enters battlefield, it will do so tapped. And when it does, sacrifice it unless you tap an untapped artifact or land you control to add mana of any color. Just, I guess, nice mana fixing. Convenient target. One mana. When it enters the battlefield, suspect enchanted creature. And enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one. Pay three, return um, it from your graveyard to your hand. All right. I mean, I probably don't think that's worth it. Uh, plus one, plus one gains menace as well, obviously, if you're suspecting it. So hmm. I'm sure it's fine. All right, I'll be. Three mana, uh, an aura with flash. When it enters battlefield, untap enchanted creature. It gains hexproof until the end of turn. Uh, if it's suspected, it is no longer suspected. Enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two, and can't become suspected. So that is not terrible. Pretty interesting. A little expensive for day to day play, but nice protection. Nice uh, battle trick as well. It doesn't add up for five instant speed return target creature card from your graver to the battlefield and suspect it. Okay. Analyze the pollen for one mana sorcery speed. This is a rare. As an additional cost to cast this spell, you may collect evidence eight. You may search your library for a basic land card. If evidence was collected, instead search your library for a creature or land card. Reveal that card. Put it into your hand, then shuffle. Okay. It's nice because it's like 
a lot of those look for land cards are irrelevant later on. Some of them have fight effects, but you don't, you know, that's not always what you're looking to go for. This is pretty decent because, you know, maybe you can just grab a, a creature or, you know, maybe you're actually playing like a land combo deck and um, that will help there as well. So pretty decent. I like it. V2, Ghazi, Inspector, two mana, one, three. As an additional cost to cast the spell, you may collect evidence six. Reach, and it enters the battlefield. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, if evidence was collected, put a plus one, plus one counter on it, and you gain two life. 100% limited card. Bite down on crime. <laughs> Four mana. Sorcery is an additional cost to cast a spell. You may collect evidence six. This spell costs two less to cast if evidence was collected. Target creature you control gets plus two, plus zero until the end of turn. Uh, it deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control. That's a lot of evidence, homie. Case of the Pilfered Proof. Two mana. Um, when a detective enters the battlefield, which we've seen as a creature type under your control, and whenever a detective you control is turned face up, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. To solve, have three or more detectives. Solved, uh, if one or more tokens would be created under your control, those uh, tokens plus a clue token are created instead. Mm, yeah. Assassin's Trophy for two. Uh-oh. I think I remember this card. Destroy target permanent and opponent controls. Its controller may search their library for a basic land card, put it into the battlefield, and then shuffle. This is instant speed permanent removal for two, but you do ramp them. It's fine. It's good enough. <laughs> Crawl whip cracker for... Uh, when we talk about this as well, uh, it's a rare. If you have old copies of it, you don't have to spend your rares on this unless you like the art. It's still a legal card. You can play your old one as it's already been collected, I believe. 3-2 uh, three, with Reach. When it enters the battlefield, destroy target token and opponent controls for two mana. Not terrible, honestly. Insect Assassin. No more lies. Two mana, instant speed, counter target spell, unless its controller pays three. If that spell is countered this way, exile it instead of putting it into its owner's graveyard. Are you kidding me? <laughs> okay. Okay. You're going to London. Long goodbye. Two mana, instant speed. The spell can't be countered. Destroy target creature or planeswalker with mana value three or less. Goodbye, Ginny Jin Jin. Goodbye, Ginny Jin Jin. I mean, they could still phase it out and stuff, but that's fantastic. Commercial District. Entering the battlefield tapped. When it enters the battlefield, surveil one. I like it. Uh, within Gruul, within Boros, within Simic, within Selesnia, within Zorius, within Golgari, within Demir, within Izzet, Orzhov, Rakdos. We're getting them all. Very cool. Uh, extract a Confession for two. Sorcery speed is an additional cost to cast a spell. You may collect Evidence six. Each opponent sacrifices a creature. If evidence was collected, instead each opponent sacrifices a creature with the greatest power among creatures that they control. Decent. Not great, obviously, but it's fine. Um, Defenestrated Phantom for six. Holy Toledos. A 4-3 with flying disguise five. Uh, I mean, uh, flying and limited is always good. Felonous Rage, one mana. Instant speed. Target creature you control gets plus two, plus zero. Gains haste until the end of turn. When that creature dies, create a 2-2 white and blue detective creature token. Hmm. Interesting. Luxodon, uh, eavesdropper. Four mana. Three, three. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All the better to hear you with. When it enters the battlefield, investigate, and whenever you draw your second card each turn, the eavesdropper gets plus one, plus one, and gains vigilance until the end of turn as a 3-3. Three, three. Dog Walker, Roof Roof, two mana, three one, vigilance, disguise two. When it's turned face up, create two one one dog creature tokens. Uh, bro. Not bad. No witness, four mana, sorcerer speed. Each player who controls the most creatures investigates, then destroy all creatures. Whew. All right. 
nice four mana field wipe that can draw you a card. It can potentially draw them a card too, though, so it's, you know, catch 22. Sanitation, and it's probably them if you're running field wipes. Sanitation automation for two mana, two one. When it enters the battlefield, surveil one. Decent, decent. Marker watch phantom, two mana, two two. Whenever another creature with power two or less enters the battlefield under your control, it's going to gain flying till the end of turn. Homicide investigator also for two is a two two. These are both detectives as well. A lot of detectives here we're finding. Uh, whenever one or more non-token creatures you control die, investigate, triggering once each turn. The sharp-eyed rookie, two mana. This one's a rare. I think the the uh, homicide is rare as well, actually. Good to note. Uh, again, a 2-2 two -two with vigilance. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, if its power is greater than the rookie's power, or its toughness is greater than the rookie's toughness, put a plus one, plus one counter on the rookie and investigate. All right, all right, all right. That's not bad. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. The investigate to draw uh, a 2-2 two -two with vigilance. It's going to get stronger every turn if you're curving out with it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Melek Reforged Researcher, 5 mana. Power and toughness are each equal to twice the number of instant and sorcery cards in your graveyard. The first instant and sorcery spell you cast each turn costs three less to cast. That's quite substantial, but it's five mana again, so it's not terrible. Legendary creature. Atomic, wielder of law, three mana, two, four. Affinity for planeswalkers, one less to cast, which is only one for each planeswalker. You control flying vigilance as a two, four. And whenever an opponent attacks with creatures, if two or more of those creatures are attacking you and or planeswalkers you control, that opponent will lose three life. And you draw a card? Okay. I like that. Voja, Jaws of the Conclave. For five big ones in Naya Colors, this is a legendary creature, Wolfskis. 5-5, five, five, Vigilance, Trample, Ward 3, whenever... It attacks, put X plus one plus one counters on each creature you control where X is the number of elves you control. Interesting. And whenever a car, uh, sorry, draw a card for each wolf you control. I like it. That's pretty cool. Fairly irrelevant, but I like it. <laughs> and then we have our last card of the day which is a, another um, case to solve. Case of Medusa's Kiss. And uh, when it enters the battlefield, destroy up to one target creature that has been dealt damage this turn. To solve it, if three or more creature cards have uh, entered the graveyard from anywhere this turn, which, you know, you may do the turn it enters, right? Because it can destroy one, and uh, maybe your creature died. Uh, as well, or, you know, two creatures, you know, it helps you potentially uh, get that third, though, which is pretty cool. And then uh, as it is solved, it's going to become a 4-4 with uh, Death Touch and Lifelink. And, um, you know, I think this is phenomenal for a free-to-play card, obviously, right? So that is that. Uh, we can jump over here as well and look at some key dates. We have the pre-release on the 2nd to the 8th. Uh, word on the street is we will have access in Arena on the 6th, which is pretty cool. Sad news is, from my understanding, the early access event has been canceled. So, you know, that is what it is. And then the open house, 9th to 11th, uh, Friday Night Magic, 9th to the 28th of March, which is quite out there. Commanded Party on the 16th and 18th. And then finally, Standard Showdown from the 12th to the 4th. Uh, which is pretty cool. So um, a fun set uh, with some interesting new mechanics uh, and some very powerful legendary cards that we've seen so far today. So with that all being said, thank you so much for taking the time to support the channel. Of course, we have new Mythic Rank Standard content out every day as well as revealing new spoilers as they're released as we are waiting 
for February 6th to play in Arena. Thanks again for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, become a YouTube member, join the community Discord, and most importantly, have an absolute magical day. We'll see you soon in the next.